Reporting from Arkham Asylum, this is Gotham Rogues. In this video we take a look at the comic book storyline Catwoman Year One. Published in 1989, Catwoman Year One, also known as Catwoman, Her Sister's Keeper, is a four-issue miniseries and Selina Kyle's first starring title. Written by Mindy Newell and penciled by J.J. Birch, the four-part story is a complete reimagining of Catwoman's origin for the post-crisis continuity. It mirrors the events of Frank Miller's classic Batman Year One and fills in all the gaps concerning Selina's part of that story. In it we meet Selina Kyle, a street smart and hardened young woman who works as a prostitute in one of Gotham City's worst neighborhoods, the East End. She lives together with another much younger prostitute, Holly Robinson, and both of them are in the employ of the violent and freakish pimp Stan. One day Stan beats up Selina more brutally than usual, sending her to the emergency room. There the investigating cop, Detective Flannery, takes pity on Selina and gives her the card of Ted Grant, a former prize fighter. After recovering, Selina begins to train in the martial arts under Grant, beginning her journey out of Stan's grip and towards becoming the Catwoman. While all of this is going on, we're also introduced to Maggie Kyle, Selina's sister who is a nun at a Gotham church. The two of them haven't seen each other for years since Selina ran away from home, but during Selina's first night as Catwoman, Maggie accidentally happens to spot her. Convinced that it was her long-lost sister in the bizarre cat costume, Maggie sets out on a quest throughout the dangerous East End, determined to find Selina. Being the first series to star Catwoman as the protagonist, and the first miniseries to star a bat rogue as the protagonist, this is a very seminal and historically important piece of work. Yet it's not really all that talked about. You know why I think that is? Because it sucks. Well, maybe that was a bit harsh. It's not unreadable. But to me, it feels like writer Mindy Newell don't quite know how to write. I haven't read any other stories of hers, so I can't be sure though. The dialogue is often unnatural, awkward, and sometimes you're not sure who's saying what and why. There are places where a character will ask something or make a statement, only to answer it themselves. And no, I don't think it's a case of me reading the speech bubbles in the wrong order, although there are instances of poorly placed speech bubbles as well. Everything in the story is also glossed over, even though this is supposed to be an in-depth look at Selina's origin. We really don't learn much more about her than we did in Batman Year One. The story never really gets inside her head, and I'm not sure why the hell Selina decides to slap on a pair of tights and climb buildings. She wants a different life other than prostitution in Gotham's worst hellhole, obviously, but why become a thief in a cat outfit? Selina doesn't seem all that interested in money, which she should be considering she's poor. Instead it seems like she wants to make a name for herself or something. Like in Batman Year One, Selina is inspired by the Dark Knight to take on an animal themed identity and become an urban legend of sorts. But why? It's not really explained in Frank Miller's story either, but it didn't need to be as she was just a small supporting character there. It was the job of this story to tell us that, but it doesn't. And why cats specifically? That's not explained either. It's said in the comic that Selina likes cats. That's that's it. No bigger meaning going on there. Just, she likes cats. Compare that to Doug Monk and Jim Balance Cat Shadows from Catwoman's Zero Hour issue. There, Selina's mother was a cat lover, as they were just like her, aloof and independent. Qualities which Selina herself inherited. So in that story, she grew up in a house full of cats and she had a personality of a cat, so to speak. Makes sense that she would choose cats as her symbol. More sense than, eh, she just really likes cats. It's not explained how she gets her costume either. All we get is the same scene from Batman Year One where she puts it on while Holly is nagging. I suppose we didn't really need to know where she got it from, but it would have been fun. And fleshing out this kind of stuff is the whole purpose of this story. She wears a different costume at first, and it is explained how she got that one. It was given to her by Stan for use with a weird client who apparently also really likes cats. Probably more so than Selina, if you know what I mean. But that's not a terrible origin of the outfit actually, considering she's portrayed as a prostitute here. 
Characters are also glossed over in this comic, and it makes you wonder what the writer really wanted to do with them. Like Ted Grant, who trains Selena. Sure, you needed somebody to do that, but her entire training really, not just Grant, is barely touched on. It feels like Ted should have been a bigger character in Selena's life, but he's just a footnote. A plot device is what he really is, because she had to learn how to fight somehow. It's weird too that no references to him being the superhero Wildcat are ever made. What a missed opportunity to not tie in his identity Wildcat with that of Catwoman's. Then there's Batman. He just kinda comes and goes in this series, showing up for no reason and doing next to nothing. This story does feature Selena's first meeting with him, so you'd think it would be grand somehow. But no, it's completely unceremonious. It's like they already know each other, yet at the same time have never met. The writing is just so off. The villain of this story is Stan, the pimp, who also had a small role in Batman Year One. I've always kinda wondered what the deal is with his physical appearance. Why does he have chalk white skin like the Joker? And what's up with all those weird scars? It's also strange that none of the other characters ever mention his bizarre look. Anyway, as a villain he's okay, as he's pretty creepy and quite a unique guy. To get to Selina, he actually kidnaps her sister Maggie about halfway through the story, and you genuinely fear for her safety, as you don't really know what the freaky pimp is going to do to the poor nun. While holding her, Stan later seems to suffer some kind of breakdown, which is interesting, although I don't really know what the hell it's about. It kind of comes off as if he's developed feelings for Maggie, or something, and is remorseful for his sins. I don't know, it comes completely out of nowhere too. That's the thing about this comic, the characters act so weird. Now this is a spoiler, but something that's really jarring is the fact that Stan is discarded by the end of the third issue. So for the final part, you don't have your main villain around anymore. That's odd. As for the portrayal of Selina herself, I've gotta say I've never liked the Frank Miller hooker version of her. I'm glad it's largely been ignored by subsequent stories, especially during my definitive Catwoman era, the 90s Jim Ballant run. It's just beneath the character to be a prostitute, and I don't feel that she would stoop to that. Selina would steal to stay alive, which also makes her transition into becoming the world's greatest thief more believable. How did she hone her thieving skills while lying in a sack anyway? Selena is also pretty unsympathetic in this story. Yeah, she has it rough, but I kind of feel like it's her own fault. She ran away from her family to the East End for some reason, and she hasn't really made any real attempts to quit this life. Until putting on a cat suit, of course, which never makes much sense in this story. She also pushes her sister Maggie away, who just wants to help her. I don't get this, Selena. In the 90s, it would be retconned so that her parents kill themselves, leaving Selina all alone, forcing her to make it on her own in the cold streets of Gotham. She didn't even have a sister. Maggie would be reintroduced in the Ed Brubaker run though, but even then it was the same thing with the parents dying, leaving the young girls to fend for themselves. This Selina chose this life, for some reason that we're never really told. The story makes a big deal out of her always running away from everything, but running away from what and why? Her motivations are just never really made clear, and in the end she just comes off as a weak, self-destructive prick. That's my opinion anyway, and maybe I'm missing something, because like I've said a hundred times now, I think that the writing here is very odd. If you view this version of Selena in a completely different light from me, then by all means write down your thoughts in the comments. Maybe you'll have some good points, and I might understand this take on Catwoman better. I feel that Maggie is a far more likable and sympathetic character. As a nun, she's obviously the exact opposite of her whoring sister, but she's also brave and strong, fearlessly venturing into the East End looking for her sister. While being captured by Stan, she never once shows any signs of breaking either, even though she's being held at the mercy of a vile killer. She's truly an admirable woman, whom her sister should try and model herself after a bit more. As for the artwork, it's decent. Not bad, but not great either. I have to say though that I absolutely hate the year one design for Selena. Her ugly bus cut and that ridiculous costume that makes her look more like Mouse Woman. Seriously, don't you think it looks more like a mouse than a cat? I think it may be my least favorite Catwoman costume, in the comics at least. Of course, the design isn't the fault of penciler J.J. Birch, but David Masicelli who penciled Batman year one. In conclusion, I think this story reads like a piece of mediocre fanfiction, written by someone who really liked Batman Year One. I still recommend it to Catwoman fans though, as it is historically important. So there you have it, that's Catwoman Year One, aka Catwoman Her Sister's Keeper. 
Remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.